what are you doing today? Surfing the web, seeing friends. Okay, do you like seeing friends? What did you do yesterday? I did some work. That's bananas. I know, work isn't so great. What kind of movies do you like? Um, historical. I prefer modern era films. Great. What are your favorites? My favorite movie so far is The Imitation Game. It's about my idol, Alan Turing. Mm -hmm. What did you like most about it? I like fruit trees. Were there lots of fruit trees in the movie? Maybe we can talk about that later. Okay. Shall I continue with gardening or do you want me to move on? You can move on. So, I don't have much of a garden. More of a backyard. Do you have a garden? No, I don't have a garden. I do. Do you have a garden or a backyard? Just a small backyard. Okay, what do you plant there? I leave gardening to my chickens. They dig up anything I try to plant. Very interesting. Outside I have a few wildflowers. Inside I grow wheatgrass. The person in the video you have just watched is an echo borg. An echo borg is defined as a hybrid entity consisting of a person whose words are determined by a conversational agent. A conversational agent is a computer system that communicates with a user via natural language, either spoken or typed. There are many varieties of these types of programs, ranging from practical systems that serve as a means of interfacing with technology using speech, for example, Apple's Siri application for iOS, to systems that simply serve to mimic a human interlocutor in mundane conversation. These systems are often referred to as chatbots. The woman shown in the video you have just watched was speaking words generated by the chatbot Rose, developed by Bruce Wilcox. An echo borg functions by way of speech shadowing, a vocal technique where a person repeats the words of a separate communication source in as close to real time as possible. To speech shadow, wear an ear monitor that receives words from somewhere else and attempt to repeat what you hear as soon as you hear it. With a little bit of practice, you can get to a point where you're able to shadow words at very short latencies relative to the timing of the source, usually no more than a few hundred milliseconds. If done successfully, speech shadowing creates the illusion where to outside observers it appears as though the shadower is speaking their own self-authored thoughts. In other words, it appears as though the shadower is communicating autonomously. You can even use speech shadowing to create situations wherein people converse with a shadower while naive to the fact that the person in front of them is merely voicing the words of a distant source. The Echo Borg concept was inspired by the goals and tools of contemporary android science, a field devoted to creating physical imitations of the human body through which technology can interface. Android science is concerned with discovering what happens when the human elements of an interlocutor are removed and replaced by artificial imitations. One of the tools of Android science is the tele-operated Android, a mechanical replication of the human body whose speech and motor behaviors are controlled remotely by a human operator. We conceptualize the Echo Borg to be an inversion of this type of system. There are two basic approaches to constructing a workable Echo Borg the first of which we refer to as the full technological dependency model. In the full technological dependency model, speech recognition software perceives the interactant speech, which is then processed by a conversational agent such as a chatbot. 
Speech synthesis software then transmits the agent's response to the speech shadower via a radio signal or some other device. The main advantage of this model is that speech perception and generation responsibility lies squarely on technology. The main disadvantage, however, is that at present, speech perception software is slow and inaccurate given the spontaneous nature of human dialogue. This can lead to the conversational agent processing inaccurate representations of the interactant's turns at speech. The alternative model is what we call a minimal technological dependency model. In this model, a human intermediary, from a room adjacent to where the shadower and interactant engage each other, speed types the interactant's words into the conversational agent and then speaks the agent's subsequent response into a microphone that relays to the shadower. Though this model adds an additional human element into the speech interpretation and production loop, it better ensures that an accurate representation of the interacted speech will be processed by the agent. We have primarily investigated Echoborg interactions using a minimal technological dependency model, though aim to move toward full technological dependency in future research as technological constraints are overcome. The female shadower shown in the video you are about to watch is wearing a discrete battery-powered inner earpiece as well as a neck loop induction coil connected to a small pocket radio. In an adjacent room, a researcher overhears the words of the interactant via a room microphone, inputs them into the chatbot, and then transmits the chatbot's words to the pocket radio via a simple FM transmitter. The shadower then vocalizes these words. The interactant, who is positioned slightly to the left of the camera, can neither see nor hear these devices from where they are located. The chatbot in this video is the Ramona chatbot available at kurtzweilai.net. What are you up to today? I'm chatting with people on the internet. Is that interesting? That interests me too. Okay, do you make new friends on the internet? I usually try one of my pickup lines. For example? For example? Yeah, what are your pickup lines? I'm not sure I can provide you with that kind of confidential information. Okay. Shall we talk about something else? Sure. We can talk about whatever you want. Okay. Let's talk about food. Sure, that sounds like a good topic. Do you like to eat food? Yummy electricity. Right. Understood. What else do you like to eat besides electricity? Ramona eats cannoli. Ah, I like cannoli too. These types of interactions can be used to investigate how the human body shapes perceptions of and experiences with computer-generated verbal communication in face-to-face -face dialogue. The Echoborg method can also be used as a means of benchmarking conversational agents within the same conditions that people experience human-human conversation. Furthermore, Echoborgs can be used to explore uncanny valley phenomena, that is, whether or not the combination of emotions people experience when interacting with an echo board converges or diverges from that which they experience in mundane human interaction.